Jersey TV. Well, just when you thought it was safe to come out of your bunkers and venture into some Clyde Bilkington teachings, I get this daily goodie in my email today. Well, I'm not going to read it just yet. I'm going to save it because it appears to me from this quote from Clyde Pilkington that I got today, September 18th, 2024, in my email from Daily Goodies that there's another grim, erroneous teaching is coming up over the horizon. If that's not the case, then this quote is very terribly worded and needs to be recast. But as it stands, it is suggestive of, well, you have to stick with me here to find out. This is Martin Sender, and you're at MZTV. Oh no, Harold, it's pick on Clyde Pilkington Day again. No, it's not. It's not pick on Clyde Pilkington Day. It's pick on Clyde Pilkington's awful teachings day. Let's review some of the teachings of Clyde Pilkington. You know, I love this. Is, I'm not picking on him. I'm picking on his teachings. They're awful. I'm going to list for you 12 or 13 teachings that he has publicly, publicly come out with that are shameful, terrible. And if you want to go there and learn them, go right ahead. I would advise you not to. And when I tell you what just came today in my email daily goodies, then you're going to say, what? Like I just said, what? I said, what? Well, there's my topic for today. <laughs> yeah, cutesy time is over. Yes, cutesy time is definitely over. It's been over. Clyde told me back in uh, 2015 it was when I came out against his teachings on a marriage. He said, the gloves are coming off, Martin. I said, okay. <sighs> I still love the man. He's still my friend. This is on teaching. It's not about personality. Clyde's personality is freaking awesome. I love the man. But these teachings are wacko. I'm not afraid to say that because, listen, this is a man who says there's no snatching away for the body of Christ. No snatching away. He says in our quote, don't waste your time Waiting for the return of Christ. Don't waste your time looking for Christ. Waiting for the return of Christ. It's a waste of time because Christ ain't coming for you. And as you know, the recent teaching is that everyone in the body of Christ must die. Yes. Well, that goes right along with there's no snatching away, but we must all die. Nobody's going to be changed. Paul says we will, but no. That goes along with another bad teaching that half of Paul's letters see aren't for us. Only the letters Paul wrote from prison are for us. The rest belong to an early edition of the body of Christ. It's now extinct like the dodo bird. And so you can't take anything, say, from 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians? Romans? Romans? 1 Thessalonians? 1 Thessalonians? You can't take anything from there and apply it to you. What? Yeah, it's called the Acts 28 position. It's terrible. Clyde says his teaching is the era is limitless. Well, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 7, the era is limited. But Clyde changes that. That doesn't apply to you. The era is now limitless. And we are to look forward to an extension of life here on earth. Oh, another teaching from Clyde Pilkington. There is a premillennial kingdom. There will be a kingdom before Israel's 1,000-year kingdom. That will last, oh, approximately 500 years. They don't know exactly how long it's going to last. Clyde got this from a wacko named Otis Sellers, who also teaches eternal torment and free will and the Trinity. And Clyde looked in on his teachings. Well, here's a teaching that says that Israel's kingdom is still guaranteed 500 years away because there's going to be a pre-kingdom. So every member of the body of Christ has to die. Yahoo! Clyde's happy about that because he wants to live a long life with his family. Anyway, every member of the body of Christ must die. Half of Paul's letters don't apply to us. The era is limitless. Don't waste your time looking for the return of Christ. There's no snatching away for the body of Christ. Oh, and he says that the Paul's phrase, we shall not all be put to repose. 
That doesn't apply, Clyde says, until the consummation. What? Yeah, it's like, yeah, that, that was my question too. What do you do with the verse that Paul says we shall not all die or we shall not all be put to repose? Well, and I covered this. I did a separate show on this. That applies at the consummation, obviously. Obviously, at the consummation, everybody's alive. Paul's going to march in at the consummation when everybody's alive and say, I have a great revelation for you. What is it, Paul? We shall not all be put to repose. Oh, Paul, you're a little late on that one. Yeah, it's absurd. These teachings are absurd. There's another way to be saved, according to Clyde Pilkington. Other than having faith in Jesus Christ, that's the only way we know of, right? That's the only scriptural way. No, but Stephen Hill and Clyde say there's another way. All you have to do is marry a believer. That's right. If you're an atheist, but you marry a believer, no worries. You're in the body of Christ. If you hate Christ, if you believe Christ never existed, you can still be in the body of Christ. Just... Sign a document with the government and put a ring on the finger of a believer and you're automatically in. And then every child you produce, after that, in the body of Christ, in the body of Christ. Just don't get divorced because then I'm pretty sure you're out of the body of Christ. But don't worry, if you get remarried, you can be back in the body of Christ. This is, this is absurd teaching and yet this is Clyde's teaching. Clyde says prophecy is not meant to tell saints what will happen in the future. I'll say that again. Clyde believes that prophecy is not meant to tell the saints what God is planning to do in the future. Huh? How can anybody say that? I don't know. The thinking is that prophecy is that so once you read the prophecy after something has happened, you can go back and say, well, God nailed it there. But you won't know he nailed it until after the prophecy. It's very complicated. Don't even try to understand it because you won't. Jesus did not pre-exist. This is the worst teaching. This is a terrible teaching. It's a blasphemous teaching. It is from the pit of satanic deception. Jesus Christ did not pre-exist. Jesus Christ, nothing came into existence through Christ. He did not have a glory with the Father before the world was. He is not the firstborn of all creation. Nothing came into existence through him. I mean, on, on and on it goes. Clyde actually believes that. Anyway, that's awful. I've covered that in depth. The flood of Noah was local. Yes, how you get that is beyond me, but Clyde believes the flood of Noah was local. The judgments of the book of Revelation, you know, the bowls and the lightnings and the thunders and all that, they're all local too. It's only for Israel. Don't worry. The earth is safe. Don't worry. Uh, husbands are to empty themselves for their wives and give up all their rights as free human beings if their wives tell them to. Yes, this is his teaching in a book called Wife Loving. Actually, it should be titled Wife Enabling. I have written a book against his book that's coming out very soon. It's called How to Love Anyone. The subtitle is Even Your Spouse. And I deal directly with this issue of hub husbands basically becoming slaves, losing their freedom. And according to this teaching, don't worry, I'm going to get to the teaching today. I'm just setting the stage here. According to, according to this teaching, a husband's number one ministry a uh, husband in the body of Christ, his number one ministry is his wife. And that is a lie. You go to the Garden of Eden, a man's number one ministry is the work God gives him. And he gives him a wife to help him with his work. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for that. My phone just notified me that it is full. It is belching, it is burping, it is smoking. And so I have to go back and delete some files. So I have to finish. Fortunately, it saved what I had recorded there. So I'm going to finish the show using the onboard camera rather than my iPhone. That's why things look differently here. Oh, and one of the, uh, the other teaching is all single women should get married. Does Paul teach that? No. Paul teaches that restless widows should get married. But Clyde rewards everything in that verse and... No, Paul recommends that you not get married. That's my recommendation. But if you have to get married, if you need to be married, if you're wired to be married, then you should get married. But if you can help it, don't get married. That's timeless advice from Paul. 
But since it's in 1 Corinthians, Clyde doesn't think it applies to us because 1 Corinthians doesn't apply to us. Oh, okay, so okay, so what was the email that got me so fired up today? What was the daily goodie? Martin Zender, how bad can it be? I'm about to tell you how bad it can be. September 18, 2024. The, quote, lake of fire, unquote, is just a part of the transition from death to life. The lake of fire, and lake of fire is in quotation marks. The lake of fire, and what does that mean when something's in, in quotation marks? It means it's not really the thing. It's not really what it is. The lake of fire is just a part of the transition. This is the word that really bothers me. And again, if what I'm going to say is not what this quote is teaching, then this needs to be trashed and recast. Just part of the transition from death to life. When you even talk about transition, from death to life, you are suggesting an intermediate state between death and life. And now I'm wondering if Clyde believes that the lake of fire, which is clearly called the second death in Revelation 2014, is not literal. The fire is not literal. The lake of fire is not literal. The death is not literal. And it's an intermediate state between life and death. Well, that's what, isn't that what you get? The lake of fire is a part of the transition from death to life. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no transition between, from, get his wording exactly right, from death to life. What is there? There's resurrection. And resurrection is not transition. Resurrection is a miracle that turns dead people into living people. It's not transitionary. It's not a halfway house. Clyde is wording this like the lake of fire is just a halfway house. The lake of fire is just a part of the transition. But wait a minute. But there, there are people in the lake of fire. Are those people not dead? Well, let's go to Revelation 20, verse 14. Revelation 20, 14. And death and the unseen were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. There you go. This is the second death, the lake of fire. So God, and I always encourage people to use God's definitions. God, When God defines something, you don't need to define it again. You don't need to redefine it. Let's read it again. This is the second death, the lake of fire. So the lake of fire is the second death. So, Clyde, how can the second death be a part of the transition from death to life? The lake of fire is death. How can the lake of fire be a part of the transition from death to, from death to life if the lake of fire is death? It's the second death. So you're trying to tell us that death is part of the transition from death? To life? No, death is a dead end situation. It's not a transition to anything. It captures human beings who no longer exist and who do not need a transition from death to life. They need resurrected. It's that word transition that's very dangerous. It, it suggests an intermediate state. Like I said, people are not transitioned. from death to life. There's a great scriptural word there that you need to use, and it's resurrection. Is the lake of fire part of the resurrection then? Okay, Clyde says, I'm going to use resurrection instead of transition. You're right. Lake of fire is part of the resurrection from death to life. It's not part of the resurrection at all. It's the reason for the need for resurrection. I have to wonder why the lake of fire, it's in quotation marks, the lake of fire is just a part of the transition from death to life. Okay, since the lake of fire is the second death, then would you also put 
second death, in quotation marks, to be consistent, you would. The lake of fire, which is the second death, is just transition. It's just. That word just is there. It's just. No, when I am teaching on the lake of fire, you'll never hear me say just. It's, it's just a bunch of people who are dead. It's just a part of the transition. These people in there, they're just part of the transition between, from death to life, even though they're dead. Gee, dead people, how are dead people part of a transition from death to life? And even if, if you're going to say, Martin, he's not talking about the dead people, he's talking about the thing, the thing itself. It's the lake of fire that's the transition, part of the transition from death to life. Oh, so it's the lake of fire. But the lake of fire is the second death. So I ask again, I'm back to this question, how can death be part of a transition from death to life? That doesn't make any sense. The only way this makes sense is if Clyde is now saying that the second death is figurative and that people in there are not really dead. That's why let's, we'll call it the lake of fire, which is the second death. It's not really that. Because it's a transition. It makes it sound like it's a halfway house. It makes it sound like the second death is the, and, and the lake of fire is a halfway house. Like the Catholic purgatory. That's what it sounds like. If it's not that, if I'm misreading it, well, I'm reading it as a common person would read it. And it sure smacks of something diabolical here. It, 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 it smacks of an intermediate state. Or is this just another installment? Is this just another bad teaching coming out of this camp? I just, where does it end? What's what's next? It's not, is it, it's not anything sacred? Is there anything sacred? What's next? Death is not death. It's just transition? No, it's not death that's part of the transition. It's the lake of fire that's part of the transition. But God defines the lake of fire. It's the second death. And if you're going to now say that death is a transition from death to life, I, I don't know what to say. Except that it sounds awful to me. As does every other thing I read earlier. It's all awful to me. It's awful. I can't. I, I can't wrap my head around how anybody can come to any of these conclusions. So, ladies and gentlemen, death is not transition. The lake of fire is not transition. The people looking into the tomb of Lazarus before he was raised from the dead, before they rolled the stone in front of the tomb, our Lord was still out of town. Mary didn't say to Martha, who was looking into the tomb, what's happening in there? Shh, Lazarus is transitioning. Our brother is transitioning. He's transitioning from death to life. Uh, no, but he's dead. Well, death is a part of the transition, you see, from death to life. Death is a part of the transition from death? Get rid of the word, get rid of the word transition unless you mean it, and perhaps you mean it, you probably mean it, in which case I'm stunned and saddened. No one needs transition. No one gets transitioned out of death to life. The word you're looking for there is resurrection. It's a great scriptural word. You have it at your disposal. I know you use it when you teach on the salvation of all. That's still sacred ground, I hope. The lake of fire is a terrible place. It's the second death. Many people are held in death. They are dead. They do not exist there's no transitioning going on whatsoever there. There's not a second mortality like Phil Scranton teaches and like my friend Fred Niemeyer used to teach and like other people teach that the lake of fire is not, that the second death is figurative. That is impossible and I've taught so many different ways on why that is impossible. It is literal. The lake of fire is literal. The lake of fire here should not have quotation marks around it unless you're improperly using quotation marks for emphasis and that's improper linguistic use there uh, when you put lake of fire it makes me think that you don't think it's a real lake of fire but it is 
And it makes me think that since the lake of fire is defined as the second death, that you would put the second death in quotation marks also, as if you don't believe the second death is literal. The, if the second death is not literal, and if it is some sort of transitioning, some sort of wonderful thing happening there between the states of death and life, then we have a glorification of death. Is that next? Is the glorification of death next here?